from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2024. Israeli troops are continuing to battle terror group Hamas in southern Gaza, where the IDF said in the last 24 hours, IDF troops located numerous weapons, eliminated a number of terrorists, and IDF fighter jets struck a number of compounds rigged with explosives and terrorist tunnels as well as weapons storage facilities and terrorist launch posts and compounds. Four police officers were injured, one of them seriously, in a suspected terror attack near the town of Kochav Yair in central Israel last night, where the suspected terrorist, who is said to be from the nearby Arab-Israeli town of Tira, drove his vehicle into the officers and then to a nearby security checkpoint where he tried to stab security guards who shot and killed him. The suspect's family saying he was suffering from mental health issues. The victims were taken to the hospital for treatment. Rockets were fired at northern Israel from Lebanon today. The IDF said a number of missiles were detected that crossed from Lebanon towards several areas in the north. There were no casualties. The IDF in response wrote its fighter jets and aircraft attacked terrorist infrastructure and military positions of the Hezbollah terrorist organization, noting that one of the military positions was used by the organization's operatives to launch missions into the Mount Dove area earlier today. More now on the tragic incident yesterday in which seven aid workers from the World Central Kitchen were unintentionally killed in an IDF airstrike in Gaza. IDF Chief of the General Staff, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi, who lauded the work of the World Central Kitchen, apologized for what happened and gave a preliminary update on the investigation thus far. The IDF completed a preliminary debrief. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. It was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in a very complex conditions. It shouldn't have happened. Halevi also said he visited the new command center for humanitarian assistance set up today to improve the delivery of aid in Gaza and protection of those who deliver it. This incident was a grave mistake. Israel is at a war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. We share in the grief of their families, as well as the entire World Central Kitchen Organization from the bottom of our hearts. U.S. President Joe Biden mourned the loss of the aid workers, saying he was outraged and harshly criticized Israel, whom he said has not done enough to protect aid workers trying to deliver desperately needed help to civilians, and said Israel has also not done enough to protect civilians. Biden adding that the U.S. was pushing hard for an immediate ceasefire as part of a hostage deal. He said, I have a team in Cairo working on this right now. A third night of rallies were held last night in Jerusalem demanding the release of the hostages now held in Gaza for 180 days, with calls also for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to step down. Towards the end of the demonstration, which began in front of the Knesset, some of the marchers split into different directions, with one group reportedly trying to reach the home of the prime minister, which led to confrontations with police and both officers and demonstrators being treated for injuries. Israeli leaders urged calm and for the adherence to the rule of law. Hillel International released a new survey on how rising anti-Semitism since the October 7th Hamas massacre has impacted what colleges Jewish teens are applying to, finding that nearly all respondents, 93 percent, 
are closely following the increase of anti-Semitic and anti-Israel incidents on campus since the October 7th terrorist attack on Israel. And most are discussing the matter with their children. 87% said the events of October 7th had an impact on their approach to selecting a college or university for their child, and nearly two-thirds, 64% of Jewish parents, said there are schools their child would have applied to, but have now crossed off their lists due to the recent rise in anti-Semitism on that campus. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, April the 3rd at 7 o'clock, David Harris speaks with Director of UK Lawyers for Israel, Natasha Hausdorf, about her work debunking egregious misconceptions about Israel. At 7.30, it's the premiere of a new exciting series about Israel on JBS, Israel Outside In, hosted by Miriam Institute co-founder Benjamin Anthony giving you an inside look and in-depth understanding of contemporary Israel. Tonight, Benjamin is joined in conversation by Brigadier General Tarif Bader, retired former head of the Medical Corps of the IDF. At 9, J.T. Rogers is on the Chaim at 10, a look at the film One Life, which tells the remarkable story of Holocaust hero Nicholas Winton. At 10.30, an encore of this newscast, and coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader, Am Yisrael Chai.